Hey guys, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. It has been a little while since I was sitting here and talking to you guys face to face. I know that I've been posting a few tutorials lately, and today I really wanted to sit down and talk to you about a new topic that I really want to make you guys aware of, and it's more of a personal topic, but it's about whether I am switching photography genres. I'm just gonna say up front, during this video when we're talking about this topic, this does not mean I'm going to stop doing beauty photography, or that's my plan, is to stop doing that altogether, or to do YouTube videos, or anything like that. It's not what it means at all. It's actually just kind of like a bit of a sideline that I'm making my way into, and just some of my thoughts around switching photography genres, uh, and kind of like a little bit of backstory on where I'm at at the moment. So as a bit of a backstory, I have been doing photography for about 16 years now, which is essentially half my lifetime. In the earlier years when I was experimenting with photography, I didn't really focus on one typical genre. And I think this is how it goes for a lot of people who were starting out with photography. I tended to uh, experiment with a lot of different genres. So I did weddings, I did landscape, travel, I did nature, macro. I kind of did anything that sparked my interest at the time until I eventually settled on doing more or less portraiture and mainly focusing on that field and then leading into fashion because it was something I enjoyed at the time. It was something that was a little bit closer to the conceptual work with portraits that I enjoyed doing at the time. So I guess that that's kind of where that all flowed for me. It also made more sense to me and I think especially to my parents at the time considering I was quite young and I had left school early uh, to try and make more of a business or an income out of photographing portraits versus photo photographing landscapes and travel. That was a little bit more difficult to see myself setting that up as a business uh, if I chose to go down that path at the time. And the original genre that actually got me interested in photography was travel and landscape. So for me, that was something that sparked my interest immediately. I was traveling when I was quite young and I started taking photos with my dad's camera. I had a couple of little point and shoot cameras at the time as well. And it just sort of eventually became something that I really enjoyed. And even when I was exploring through deviant art and finding all this inspiration for photography, a lot of it tended to be travel and landscape that I was very interested in. But although I was interested in it at the time, as I said, it really felt like a very difficult career path to take for myself. It was already hard enough, I guess, to convince my parents at the time that I wanted to be a freelancer, which at that time there wasn't really a lot of, I guess, freelancing careers available. And it wasn't really a term that popped up very regularly like it does today. And you have to remember at this time, there was no Instagram, there was no such thing as an influencer. There was barely even a realm of online education at the time to learn from. YouTube was still a very fresh thing and I didn't really have a lot of places I could go to to learn new things. The only thing that I could really do at the time was go to do a course, which I did a few years later, but I felt that for me, portraiture was kind of like that solid uh, growth thing that I could focus on and it definitely still piqued my interest in terms of conceptual work and leading into fashion But unfortunately for landscape and travel photography, I kind of dropped it at this point It did however stay at the back of my mind for many years until I actually met my partner Dan Now Dan is also a photographer and also enjoys travel and landscape photography and quite a bit of nature photography as well We both really enjoy hiking and traveling together. So eventually that travel photography kind of snuck back in as a bit of a hobby for me on the side. And then in 2017, some of you might know that we started a travel vlogging channel called Wonder Walkers, which we still have to this day. But I'm sad to say that as much as we really enjoyed doing the travel vlogging for the channel, it was something that we felt we could never focus on 100% because we always had so many other commitments and so many other distractions from it that we just felt we couldn't focus on it. So it kind of became this inconsistent project for the both of us over the years. Fast forward to now, and I feel like I'm starting to move into a new stage of my life. And I've become really hungry to try new things and to learn new things with photography, especially this year and coming out of COVID lockdowns and things like that over the last two years, I just felt very restrained and now I kind of feel a bit more freer again to do those sorts of things and really get out there and learn new things. And although I can absolutely still learn a lot of new things and thrive on new things with my portraiture as well, I do feel it's important to start shifting my focus to what my current interests are as well. So does this mean I will stop doing beauty photography and fashion and portraiture in general or retouching tutorials or anything like that? No, it doesn't mean that I'm going to be stopping doing that. 
that. And I still obviously love the online education aspect of my work. I feel like it's another outlet for me, but I really do feel the need to finally make some time for this other stuff that's been hanging around in the background for a number of years now. And I just feel like I want to pursue it more. I've also been thinking a lot about lately how we're always taught to niche down to that one photography genre. Uh, for our businesses and kind of leaving it at that. And it's actually something that I've preached myself a lot on my own channel over the years, but it's definitely something that I've been thinking more and more about lately. And especially, I mean, if you've been doing the same genre, for example, for 10 years or over 10 years, and you're really starting to feel like maybe it's getting a bit stale for you or you really wanna try something new. Even if you just wanna try something new, you really don't have to have a particular reason. But I've started to wonder if this whole niche down to one genre thing starts to kind of stifle creativity in a way. I agree in a sense that it's important not to do everything all at once. That really causes overwhelm and it, and it causes confusion. And sometimes it makes you end up feeling worse because you've done all of the things all at once and nothing seems to be working out or it's just a lot to take on. But I think there really has to be this midpoint of doing several of the things that you want to do over your lifetime and letting that be okay to try new things and to do several things that you want to do instead of just sticking to one small niche thing for the rest of your life. Creating travel photography and video content right now for me is exciting and it's something that I really enjoy doing and it's something that really does make me happy. But unfortunately, I'm still not going to have all the time in the world to do it due to other commitments and I'm also not saying that I'm going to be great at it <laughs> because I'm definitely still learning a lot when it comes to travel photography and video but I think it's always really important to give those things a go in your life that you really want to do and if it doesn't work out then that's okay and at least you can say that you tried. So if you would like to keep up with my travel photography and video content process and my journey with that you can actually follow me at at Kaylee Travels on Instagram and you can also follow my partner and I at Wonder Walkers over on YouTube and check out the channel there where we'll be doing a lot of travel content and vlogging. And I actually wanted to kind of see with you guys today and ask this question because I feel like I'm genuinely intrigued and I really want to know how many of you out there are aspiring travel and landscape photographers. I'd really love to know down in the comment section below and if you would like to see editing tutorials in future for that kind of genre. I definitely wouldn't be opposed to doing that sort of content on my channel because obviously <laughs> most of my content is either retouching or photography related, but shifting more into that field as well would be something that I'd definitely be open to if there were enough people that would be interested. If you'd like to see tutorials on that kind of genre of photography, then definitely let me know in the comments. Another genre that I'd really like to touch on hopefully very soon is some product photography. And I have already dabbled a little bit in product photography over the last couple of years, but it's something I'd like to definitely explore more of in some of my free time, I think. So I hope this video wasn't too boring for you guys. It's just really giving you guys a bit of a backstory and a little bit of like a where I'm at at the moment with photography and where I'm kind of wanting to head with it. As I've mentioned, it doesn't mean I'm stopping anything else in the process, but I definitely will be dedicating more time to the things that I love, I think from here on out as well. And I think it's about time that I probably did that. I think I've been holding off for too long as it is. But please let me know as well in the comments down below, what are some other genres of photography that you would love to try out or some other genres that you've been thinking about trying out but haven't because you feel like you have to stick to your niche. Let me know down in the comment section below and I will see you guys in the next video. Video. Bye.